What is going on, everybody? Welcome to What's the 411 with your girl, Miss Ellie. So excited to have you guys here with me. I'm excited about today's conversation. Very, very excited about today's conversation. Um, so we are pretty much going to jump right into it. All right, guys. I'm always excited about that real talk. So let's, let's talk about it, guys. Instagram wasn't behaving today. We almost didn't even get a chance to do this. Hey. Hello. How are you? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm just going to adjust this. And just a disclaimer, my daughter is here. Oh, okay. <laughs> she said hi, baby. <laughs> How are you? How are you? I am good. How are you? <laughs> Eating chicken and broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's All right. good. All right. So um, how is everything? We almost didn't get a chance to do this because, you know, Instagram was acting crazy. I know, right? I'm like, I didn't even get a chance to repost it on my page earlier because mm -hmm. it started acting up like as soon as I saw it. So, you know, technology okay. works for, for us when it feels yeah. like it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so introduce yourself. Let everybody know who you are and what you do. All that good stuff. Okay, awesome. So my name is Shanique Luke. I'm a love preparation coach. So I help women who struggle in getting commitment and who are stuck in situationships get the commitment they desire and prepare for their God designed marriage. So um, I love doing it. I was the queen of situationships. So I felt like, okay, God, like he, he revealed a lot of things to me when I was going through my journey. And so that's basically what I'm teaching other women. Okay. Okay. So first of all, for anybody who doesn't know, um, what is a situationship? It's basically a relationship. Um, it's basically a situation where you're dealing with someone, where you're acting as if you're in a relationship, but you basically don't have a commitment. So you're doing everything that, people in relationships and in marriages do, but you're not, you actually don't have a verbal commitment from the other individual. It's like a um, one-sided relationship. Mm -mm -mm. And so, <laughs> right? Like, I think we've all been in situationships yeah. before, right? Um, so talk to us about marriage. How do you know when you are ready for marriage? Uh, I think the most important thing is making the decision that that's what you want. A lot of people I come to, when I talk to women, some of them are just feeling forced to be in a relationship because of what society says. So I always ask the question, is this what you want? Or even if they've gotten stuck in a situationship, they feel like they want to marry this particular guy just because they've spent so much time with him. So I always mm -hmm. ask the question, what do you want? Secondly, understanding that you have the my phone on do not <laughs> I apologize. Um that's okay. But I think the most important part um is understanding that you have to be whole first. Um I think for most of my life, before I really got an understanding of my relationship with God, I always thought the other person, you, 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 you hear people say that's my better half, but the mm -hmm. truth of the matter is it has to be two holes that come together. So the most important part is becoming whole, healing if you've had any type of hurt from prior relationships and just really enjoying. Yeah. And that's important to know because a lot of people think that they might be ready for marriage because they've just been in so many different situations. Can you repeat can you that? Me? I didn't hear you. Oh, okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, a lot of people think that they're ready for marriage, but they're in a situationship. How mm -hmm. do we, how are we able to differentiate like really real? Like how do we know like 100% I'm not looking for um, this, I, I, I'm like, how do I know what I'm looking for? You know what I mean? Because a lot of people say that they're looking for one thing, but 
we may just be confused. Well, I think, and, and just to clarify, are you saying, like, while I'm dating someone, I need to figure out what I'm looking for, or if I'm just by myself? Right. So is it, are you only able to find out that you are ready for marriage when you're by yourself? Or can you be dating and know that you're ready for marriage? Well, I think that, you know, it's something that is just in us, right? Like, as human beings, we desire companionship. Uh, we want to be loved as much as a lot of men don't like to admit it, right? It, they make it like a, fe a, a, I won't say female, I hate that term, but a woman thing, right? But I think it's just being able to be self-aware, understanding mm -hmm. who you are and being able to identify like just what makes you better, what triggers you, <laughs> uh, what takes you to a bad place and you know, what brings out the worst in you, right? So just understanding who you are and like I say, most of the time, when I get on the phone and I talk to my clients and they're like, I don't know what to do with this guy. When I actually ask them what they want, they don't even know. They just, you know, they, they're getting older. Mama is putting pressure on them. Daddy is saying certain things. It's like, I'm doing this because my parents did it. My grandparents did it. And they don't even know what they truly want. So I'll, the biggest thing is being so self-aware so that your no's are no's and your yeses are yeses. Yeah. So is marriage for everybody? I don't, I don't think so. But I don't believe that God puts the desire in you and then calls you to be single because that's the other mm -hmm. thing I always hear. Well, what if God just wants me to be single? Because there are some people who have been called to be single, right? But I believe that the guy that I know, the loving guy that I know, he's not going to put that desire in your heart because the Bible talks about, I will give you the desires of your heart. And so I, I believe that people who are single, who are called to be single, I apologize, do not desire marriage. So I think it's just like, <clears throat> like to answer both questions, right? To go back to like, how do you know? First, the desire is there. You know, there are things in us that we can't shut off, even if we try. So the desire is there first, but the ability to be able to acknowledge it and, and do things every single day to align with those desires. Yeah. And then so um, when you know that you are, you're on this journey, you're becoming more self-aware, you're doing your thing, what are some tips that you would have for people to um, to know that journey, to understand that they're on that journey, to succeed on that journey? Well, I think it's like any other goal. But for some reason, we treat relationships differently because we look at it as like, oh, somebody else is involved, right? So I don't have I don't have control over it. But that's the biggest lie. Like, the same way that we pursue careers, the same way that we chase losing weight or gaining weight, whatever our goals are, right? It's a mental thing more than we really realize it. Because when I make a decision that I want to be in a committed relationship, I need to do the things, <laughs> do the things like I said, every single day, right? I'm, if we're in a, if we're dating, you don't want to be married and you don't desire a committed relationship, then I should not date you. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're disrespectful and I want a healthy relationship, then I need to disconnect from you. You know what I mean? So, and I show up as the woman I want to be in this marriage. And I think that's the biggest thing that we kind of mess up in our mind. We think that we have to wait till we get there to show up as this person. And that's what any goal you yeah. know, so showing up every single day as the person you want to be thinking and speaking like that person and others are going to think you're crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like, you have to, it, it really is mind over matter. It doesn't matter what the dating scene looks like. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what the ratio is because all those things were statistics will discourage you. You know what I yeah. mean? So it's like, okay, no. Because my authority is in Christ, 
You know, that's what I teach women. You have the authority to live the life that you want to live. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. I was 37 when I got married. And up until that point, everybody told me I, something was wrong with me because I wasn't married. People told me that I was too old to have children. People told me that I, I live in Atlanta. So people told me there were no good men in Atlanta. They told me I would never, like all these things. And I heard mm -hmm. it for a long time. I believed it. And so that's why I settled for whatever was given to me, right? So I never had an issue with getting the man. It was the commitment. But I would just be like, okay, well, he's here. He doesn't, you know, he's not horrible or he may not do this thing. Mommy. Hold on, baby. Um, and so once I began to understand grace and that I had authority in who I was, you want more chicken? Who I was in Christ. I began to understand that I could I could do anything, and that and that included having the marriage that I longed for since you know since I was younger. You know, not I don't think I was that girl that desired marriage from like a little girl, but definitely mm -hmm. like as I got older, I had friends who were married early, you know, and I knew that I wanted to be married um, as a like like maybe late teens, early twenties, you know. When you when you start really being exposed to being in a relationship, you know. Yeah. You know, I was gonna ask you about that about the dating pool because you know some people would be discouraged when they see what's going on outside when they, you know, um, different people telling them different things. It can be disheartening, mm -hmm. but you do have to have you know maintain your faith in Christ and keep just moving. Yeah, and that's the thing. If we look at statistics. Usually it kind of stems from a negative context. You know what I mean? It's, 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 I think I don't like, I can't base my life on what statistics say because I'm living proof right now that everything that statistics said were false because I went to what the word said. So God said that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and he receives favor from the Lord. So that was like one of my, um, that I, my anchor scripture, you know what I mean? Because I was like, you know what? It may look like this. It might feel like this because our feelings lie to us. It's something that we can't depend on and they change every day. So my feelings every single day was telling me something different. So I'm like, okay, what does the word say? And so I think, one, we don't really know who God is because our our image of him is distorted due to religion. And so the first thing that I really began to do was establish a relationship with him. Like I began to look at him like an earthly father. And then when I, like when I we first started talking, I said, the, the God that I know, the one I have a relationship with, the loving, you know, God and caring and merciful and and graceful God, he's not going to put things in you that are just going to be there just, you know, <laughs> just for kicks. You know, mm -hmm. there's a reason that you desire certain things. And I truly believe that God put them there for a reason. So I, I just believe that women need to really understand the authority they have in Christ first, really develop that authentic self-love, not the Instagram fake love, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the women empowerment fluff that we sell to other people when we struggle with insecurities. Um, and they really understand who, how much he loves us so we can see ourselves the way that he sees us. And then we began to show up differently. We're able to establish those healthy boundaries. And then it's like, okay, so the wrong thinking the wrong habits, all those things, oh, I, I, I get rid of them. I got, yes, I got it, baby. It's DoorDash. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. Um, yeah, that's, you know, you're saying you're hitting all the important points. You know what I mean? Um, no. And then, so is our partner that's out there um, that we are believing is coming to us doing like the same thing on the other side? Absolutely. 
Um, and, and I think that the, the, the misconception is that only the women are doing the work. And that's false because there are, I, and I, I've seen it, you know, men have relationship with Christ as well. They're praying for wives just as well. But if we don't believe that they are, we won't see it. So we have to really fix our mind that God is going to bring a man into our lives. And, and you know, if you have a relationship with Christ and you are believing for a mate, a equally yoked mate, then I believe that it will come, he will show up. You know, but we can't be so desperate to just take whoever shows up. Like we have to allow God to help us to discern. Like, cause we know, I, I think we know, no, I know we know when a fool shows up, we just need to be strong enough to turn him away and walk away from it instead of, you know, desiring love so much that we become desperate. Very true. Mm -hmm. um, so what are your thoughts on divorce? Um, okay, so I'm not going to be, you know, I'm, I'm three years in the game. And I understand that, you know, marriage is hard. But I think a lot of times we give up a little too, too soon. Um, I believe that we marry the wrong people. <laughs> so there is one thing that I kind of always question, like, because I know there's favor in marriage. Mommy. So if I marry the wrong guy, does Mommy. guy does will God bless that marriage? And I truly believe that God has the ability to change every situation. Now, right. I do believe that um when when um abuse is involved, that that is the right to walk away from a marriage and when um consistent infidelity is involved. Like you have to have someone who's going to meet you halfway. Um, and if you're just doing, cause, cause marriage is work. And, and when I say work, I'm not talking about like love is pain and we got to do this. Like it's hard in the sense of when you walk out the door, there are going to be things that you face right in the flesh. But as long as you guys are a team, like you can meet any, type of struggle or anything that comes your way because especially if it's the, the relationship is rooted in and centered around christ um but i think a lot of times we, we're marrying the wrong people because we just want to be married like we're so caught up with um either the pressures from our family members um the, the spirit of competition you know, we're trying to keep up with everybody. We want to have this this wedding, but we're not focused on doing the work for the marriage. Um, so I do believe that in those situations, divorce is valid. Because I'm not going to stay in a divorce, I mean, in a marriage and I'm getting my head beat in. You know what I mean? Just for the sake of being married. Like, I'm not going to tell you that. Like, it's, you know, or you're, you're being... Um, uh, um, verbally abused because that's I think that's sometimes too, yeah. that does more damage right you know um, but yeah I do believe in those particular cons um, situations that divorce is valid yeah um, so of course you've been talking the whole time about Christ and how that is the center of your business mm -hmm. um, talk to us about the role Christ plays in your life and in connection with the business that you have going on yeah, sure. Um, so he's everything. He's my source, you know. Um, and I feel like I know that God wants to use me to help women get to their that marriage that he has, for, and just that life that he has for them. But I just feel like he has such a bad reputation of this, like, punishing angry God right oh oh so I feel like a part of my job is to show you can I can mommy finish <laughs> um we always sing 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 a certain oh song at that time so that's what she's doing but um I I he he is he's my source and and I I go to him for everything but oh, I was saying, I apologize, I got distracted. My, I feel like another part of my goal is to show people just like who God truly is. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not 
a dumb deep Christian. Like I genuinely have a relationship with him. I'm not perfect. I'll never be perfect. It's impossible, right? But understanding like who he is, like if we began to look at Christ the way we look at our parents, right? Like they're going to love us no matter what. They will get angry at us sometimes, but they will need to discipline us at some time. And most of the time that discipline is best for us, you know? And sometimes they will withhold things from from us because we can't see like if it was up to Gabrielle she probably would eat Gabrielle! yes ma'am okay. she would eat candy all day right but I that's know good. as a parent that that's not good for her but when I take that piece of candy away from her she's like oh my god this is horrible right so I think Mom, when God isn't working Mom, in our timing huh? yeah mm-hmm um, when he's not working in our can you give mommy can mommy finish talking? Yeah, give me a second. Great conversation, guys. Um, hope you guys are taking notes. Um, if you are in a situation ship, <laughs> um, you definitely want to reach out to Shanique. Um, if you guys need assistance, with you're welcome relationships and okay seeking. sorry about that <laughs> thank you for your patience it's like <laughs> trying to do i know i have My little thing. ones too they're not that little anymore but i know exactly yeah. they need the attention when they're calling it's just gotta put them first you know <laughs> yes and i'm still learning too she's two so i'm learning but we're getting there you know um <laughs> but um what were we talking about in reference to um i guess faith and oh, your okay. business yes so oh okay so I, I was about to say um just talking about the reputation that christ has like when he doesn't move in our time we yeah. get angry at him right um so okay three things we have to understand that leaders ministers pastors are humans so when we experience church hurt we take those people as representatives of who Christ is. And that's not the truth, right? One. Two, I believe that we just have to trust God's timing like it's perfect. So when things happen um, or don't happen in a certain time frame, we get angry at him. And we, we, we leave the one person that wants to help us the most, right? And then three, understanding that God isn't the only spiritual force that's working in the earth. There are there's there are demons, you know, Satan is at work all the time. So when bad things happen, understand that that's not that's not God. But we do we like pile, pile it all up on him and you know ruin that relationship. And God is the one thing, the the one loving father that wants to help us the most. I think religion has really um, done us a disservice to know who Christ truly is. And I think the most important thing, and like I say, he's my source. I wouldn't have anything. My life would not be where it is today without him. So when it comes to my business, it's the same thing. You know, God is my CEO. You know, so I allow him to lead me and guide me in every single thing that I do. And even when things don't always work out the way that I plan or I think it should go, I just trust him. Very, very important. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, what sets your coaching aside from others? Like, if somebody needs coaching on this um, lane in their lives, why should we come to you? Well, I think that um, I am the living example of being in. I've, I have. <laughs> I always laugh at myself because I'm like, girl, what were you doing? But I have been in long-term relationships for so long. And so just being an example of my ideal client, right? Um, getting, I know exactly, like, when I tell you it's a gift, uh, because when women sit down with me, like, I, I can read through them. <laughs> I know because I've, like, I've been through, see, see, here's the messed up part. Not the messed up part, but here's the thing. People think that because they see the pretty pictures 
and they see the 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 wedding photos and they see where it is now and they assume oh she doesn't know the hard part but let me tell you i like i was a hot mess <laughs> but, like i've done things for love you know what i mean i've been desperate i've been heartbroken i've had low self-esteem i've done i've struggled through all of that right so being a testimony for the woman who is in a situation or feels like love is never going to happen or feeling like it's um i'm gonna die like these are all the thoughts that we have i'm gonna die alone something's wrong with me because especially women who are older you know they're I think 30 is probably the age where you really begin to feel like, okay, when is it going to happen? Um, and when it doesn't, not only are you thinking what's wrong, but there are people that are actually saying out of their mouth, what's wrong with you? Right. So that is something that we take, we internalize. And I just want to show them like, listen, I did it. I took authority. I understood, like I fell in love with my, fell in love with God, fell in love with myself. So I know what it's like to be in their shoes. And so I just feel like you can't get that from someone who hasn't experienced what you're going through. Um, yeah, so. Ooh, um. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, so where do we go to sign up? So um, actually, in the process of creating a, another program because I was doing a 90-day um, coaching program and so recently took a survey and I found out that people want something different but what I do right now is if you're interested in working with me we set up a um, discovery call and we just go through to make sure you're a right fit right um, so my, my website is theloveprepacademy.com and you can go on to the website and sign up and we, we just have a phone call, right? Because a lot of women have experienced trauma and that, that's not who I want to, that's not who I work with. I refer them to a therapist. Um, so I'm not, oh, I don't fit with everybody. I think you have to be in a certain position. Like if you've been in a relationship with someone for a certain amount of years, you desire marriage, you're not getting it. Yeah, you're the, the person that I typically work with. But so we talk through that, right? To make sure that, excuse me, that you're a good fit before I sign you up for, for anything. Because I don't want just any client. I want someone who I can help get to their, <laughs> um, you know, their ideal place. Uh, and ultimately getting moving towards marriage, you know, whether it be staying in that relationship and having it shift or moving out of that relationship and making space for the person who God has for you. Um, so you go to the website, we have a call, and then we take our next steps and I just do my recommendations from there as to what's a good fit for you. Okay. And um, what keeps you going? Um, she does, <laughs> you know, wanting to do something different for her. Um, and honestly, just looking at my husband and my daughter is just a re like my reality is every single day. And being where I am now and coming from a place where I never thought someone would love me and that the, the thing that I wanted the most wouldn't exist. Like, I want that. I want to share that with other women. And I know that when you're dating and when it feels like it's never going to happen, you get hopeless. You get tired, worn out, you know? Like, we, we become, we put up walls. We walk around in self-preservation. We don't even know how to date anymore because we're so afraid of being hurt. Like, all these things are controlling us. And I just want to show you um, how to re like really truly get the love that, excuse me. Can you be quiet? Thank you. Um, you know, really like just understanding, like I know what it's like to want that thing and feel like it's never going to happen. 
Um, I'll tell you this. Um, there was a point where Gabby probably was about two months. So she was still, you know, the little, just that little thing. And um, we were on the bed. And it was just like a, like a full circle moment, like feeling like that was never going to happen. And I was just like, my, Mario's like, what's wrong? I'm like, no, this is the, the, this is a moment that I've always like dreamed of, right? And I want other women to have that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's what keeps me going. My little, my little Instagram baby. Girl, you can't be showing her. Look, look. I'm like... <laughs> but um, so that's what keeps me going. Um, most of all, you know, wanting just to change, you know, do a generational shift, create wealth, um, do things differently for my family, but then do the same for other women, you know, because I'm no different from anybody else. So if God God is not a respecter of persons, right? He did it for me. He would do it for you. But you have to really understand and just have 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 access to someone who will say this is possible. Powerful stuff. Um, so, do you have any shout outs you want to make? Um, I actually don't. But thank you so much for um, allowing me to come on and speak. You know, um, my Instagram is Shanique Luke. If you guys want to follow me, I'm actually going to be doing a lot, like a few transition to where most of the things are going to be available on my podcast. Um, because I really, I genuinely just want to serve my audience and just do like, you know, just consume myself with this thing so that you really, yeah, give me just, okay, I'm almost done. Um, but just really, um, you kind of met me, I think you hit me up like right before the shift. And so what I did was instead of trying to show up like everyone else and thinking like what a coach should look like, I really started to like, um, just get more, um, show up differently with God so that I could get in, in alignment with him so that I can genuinely serve my audience and the women because I think I had gotten so caught up with like here okay getting so caught up with creating content hold on just a second Yes, guys. So great conversation. If you missed it, what's up, everybody in the chat? Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're out here. We're, you know, talking about love, talking about relationships, talking about situationships, marriage, and all of that great stuff. Um, Shanique Luke is a um, is a love prep coach based out of Atlanta, Georgia. So you definitely want to check her out on Instagram. Check out her different services that she offers. And if you are or you know somebody who is interested in one of her services, you definitely want to make sure you hit her up. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you so much for your patience with me. <laughs> Typically, my mom will come over when I have these things, but she's not feeling well. So um, we got to make it do what it do, you know? So, um, but anyway, yeah. So, you know, I appreciate you inviting me. And just making a space, you know, for entrepreneurs to come and talk and, you know, tell, talk about what they're doing and just creating that platform. Um, so thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, before I let you go, I want to know if you have like a motivational quote or anything inspiring that you'd like to leave us with. Um, you know, I think the one thing that has carried me through just the biggest shift in my life and getting to the life that I prayed for at one point is understanding that thoughts become things. And then in the same sense, the words that you speak, <laughs> like we take that so lightly, you know? And when I began to speak in alignment with the life that I was praying for, everything changed. But the biggest thing 
was understanding that when I I have to see it here before I see it here. And um, we just don't understand how much power we have with our thoughts and with the words that we speak. So life and death is literally in the power of your tongue. If you wake up and speak death over yourself every single day, you will see it in your life. So speak life. You know, it's it, here's the thing. It's going to feel crazy because everything that you see, everything that, especially if you're completely shifting from a, like, if you come from a certain type of lifestyle and you're speaking the exact opposite, the environment, the people will tell you something different. And you have to be so gung-ho in who God is and the, what you're praying for that you have to allow that to sh literally shift what you see, like your physical. So the biggest thing is thoughts become things. Like you have to capture those negative thoughts before they take any root. Because trust me, I was, I would live in negativity because I, I thought that that was protecting me. So if I think it, if I prepare for it, you know, and I mean, and you heard it, right? Prepare for the worst. Expect, you know, expect the best. Prepare, like, what? No, I'm going to expect the best. I'm going to prepare for the best. So we just have to really understand that thoughts become things and life and death is in the power of the tongue. So much. I appreciate you for coming on. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll definitely be in touch, though. Yeah, definitely. Any, any way I can support um, what you're doing, just let me know. All right. Sounds good. Thank you again. All right. You're welcome. Y'all have a good night. Good night, Gabrielle. Gabby, you going to say good night? Night. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes, guys. So that was a great conversation, of course. You guys... If you are looking for, you know, relationship advice, if you're looking for um, anything else, you're looking for God, um, um, sorry, I'm getting these text messages. If you're looking for anything, love prep coach, um, you, you got to definitely make sure that you are getting in touch with Shanique. She has the, the tools that you need to help you to move on to the next level. But most importantly, I love what she was saying about thoughts become things. I talk about it all the time, but mindset is the key, right? So it's really important to make sure that we're understanding that mindset is something that is definitely, definitely very, very important. Having those uh, thoughts, having those positive energies that you're putting out will help you when it comes back to retrieving the things that you set your mind, you set your intention on. So, um, and another thing that she had said was expect the best, right? Prepare for the best and expect the best. It's not always something that we're taught. So it's about making sure that we're shifting our mindset, putting aside those negative things that we, you know, grew up with. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys, I have a little bit of a cold. Expect the best, prepare for the best, you know, so it's... It's really something that you have to make sure that you're preparing for. All right. Thank you guys so much for um, joining me. I appreciate you. I am going to go get some rest and make sure that you guys have a restful, productive, awesome week. And if you are looking for any love preparation, trying to get out of that situation, trying to just find that, you know, um, you're trying to, whatever it is that you're looking for, um, when it comes to relationships, definitely want to reach out to Shanique and see if you're a good fit for her program. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you next week right here on What's the 411. All right, take it easy, guys.